What's going on everybody? Welcome back Jacked Up Fishing. Well, as you can see behind me, still working on this boat. I'm almost done though. Even though it doesn't look like it, the pile of new parts is getting smaller. That means it's getting installed. But right now, what I got going on is the wiring. As you've seen, I just did the dash. It came out beautiful. But now I got this big mess of wiring. I'm going to set it all up, show you how I do it, what tools are the correct tools to use for wiring, and I'll just show you how I rewired this whole boat. I've already pulled everything from the back to the front. So I got a big four inch rigging tube, everything's coming out of there, comes to the back back here. That's what it looks like in there. You want to do a continuous run on everything. You don't want any splices in the middle inside the rigging tube because it gets wet in there. So I did everything as one run home run shots all the way to the console to the back and um that's pretty much it all right so i'm gonna get to it well let's get going i'm gonna make a plate right now and mount some stuff to it i have a fuse holder a battery on off switch of course amplifier for the stereo and um i'm gonna go ahead and start cutting it now all right let's get to it so the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make a, a, a board to mount everything inside the console like the fuse holder the amplifier like i was talking about earlier i'm using just simple pvc board you can get it at home depot you can get it at lowe's i don't want any wood or anything that can go bad this stuff's pretty inexpensive i think it's like 24 dollars for a two by four sheet maybe 30 dollars but it cuts well works well um and it looks great so i'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this bad boy you can also glue it with pvc glue which is pretty cool i used it for my seat base as well on the console um, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready on this. Start getting it rocking. Before I had on my boat, I got it brand new in 2012. I rigged it up and this was my panel before. I had a switch panel here that had an on off switch, had all my ground bus bar. And I had some stuff for the OptiMax right here, but this was inside the console door. It lasted over 10 years. It was perfect. It's starting to look, as you can see, look at the age. Um, all the wires are heat treated, heat shrunk, and it works really well. Didn't have any issues, but I'm gonna do the same thing, but a little bit different this time. I made another plate here. I'm going to um, do the same thing, same mount up, but I'm gonna have another plate on the back side along the top of the fuel tank which i'll show you i'm going to mount my amplifier for my stereo and uh, just try to make everything a little bit more neat this time it did last good last time it was neat last time but i'm gonna try to do a little bit better of course so i'm gonna bring you with me on this part i'm gonna fabricate this drill some holes for my switch put a new fuse panel in there and uh hopefully i'll get this in today so right now i'm just measuring to see where I want everything. I got lots of room here. I'll probably put the switch right here in the middle. It was a little high before, put it put in the middle. And this is just PVC board, like I said. Um, I have a seam here, but you ain't gonna see it. It's backed up. And then I'll also have another plate on the back side, kind of at a 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and start screwing this stuff down, get it all ready, drill the hole, and I'll be right back. All right, so I got the switch mounted, got the fuse panel mounted. Everything looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting everything ready to put it in the boat, and then I'll pre-wire everything. Do a, I just wanna do a little mock-up real quick. So I got the panel I made in here for my first mock-up. It looks pretty good so far. I have everything mounted. I usually uh, flush mount these screws in here, and then I have a trim ring all the way around for my hatch. 
so it covers everything but i i flush mount these screws screw it in here and it's pretty solid i'm also going to have a piece attached back here to hold my amp back in the back from the inside but that's the way it looks right now it looks really good and clean i'm going to put a little pocket here in the future for maybe like some bug spray or some little knickknacks not very deep just a little pocket maybe just to kind of uh, hold some stuff that i need that i you know use a lot but um pretty cool it looks pretty clean batteries go here of course and it's all dirty so i'm gonna have to get it uh cleaned up that's for sure all right well it looks good so far i'm gonna mark a few things uh and get back to work so i've actually pulled the panel back out of the boat i'm mocking a few things up so before i actually mount it in the boat i can plan ahead do stuff accordingly right now i just put a little anchor spot because i'm putting a uh another plate going the other way for my amplifier i also am using these little things right here i want to plan ahead put a few of these up there these are little anchors for zip ties or wire ties and you can mount your loom up in this way keep it everything nice and nice and routed nicely you know you can tie wrap it together keep it nice up off the off the ground you know all that good stuff also if you're using tie wraps you can use the ones with the holes in it and you can mount it same thing screw it to stuff and keep everything together as well just attachment points to keep everything from hanging so you want everything to be nice looking look good and uh up and out of the way so i'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff done put it back together here and uh start rigging so i got all the anchors i just talked about all mounted up boom boom got a few up there by the panel so that way when i go to rig it everything can be ran back here brought up turned into here turned into here you know like um and it's all fastened behind here i could do that right at the end upside down of course in the console all right then let's go start wiring it up get it done all right so it's been a few days since i've been out here i had to give it a little break i was going hard at it but as you can see i have a big mess going on right now i got wires hanging everywhere the dash looks good but i got a bunch of wires i got a bunch of the heat shrink connectors crimpers speaker wires and i made this harness for my new switches as you can see right here i've got them all tied up and these are the new switches they're from amazon and i'm going to put a link in the description below but they're kind of like boca techs they're like an off-brand boca tech um, they light up when you push them and everything and it's pretty cool because if they do go bad all i gotta do is unscrew this i can keep my harness intact right here and they just plug in they just plug in together i'm gonna put some dielectric grease in there and they're marine switches they're stainless steel um they're pretty pimp they light up around the outside edge and i have labels that go inside here to make it look really boss so i've already drilled the holes in the console up top i got seven holes up top as you can see that's where the switches are going to be going and then uh i'm gonna start hooking stuff up once i get this ran i'll start hooking everything up and i'll show you the butt connectors i'm using they're all heat shrink um i'll also show you some special uh deals i found on some marine grade heat shrink which crimpers to use and which ones not to use um and uh we'll get to it let me get these switches in we'll get on it okay guys here's the switch i got it's called the a peel it's a 10 amp stainless steel switch just an on off it lights up around the outside ring here's a couple of them mounted right here in the in the boat they look really clean i got a couple chip marks i gotta fix but other than that it looks really clean real clean um i'm gonna plug it in but first what i'm gonna do is in here i'm gonna put dielectric grease in there before i lock it in and uh that'll keep it from corroding as well keep the connection real good all right so i'm gonna go ahead i got a couple tight spots i'm just gonna put it in there hopefully i can get it all together pretty quick start wiring stuff up all right so i got the dielectric grease there's one of the fittings i'm going to put in i'm going to plug in the back side of that switch so all i'm going to do is take this fitting and just squirt some in there and just use my finger poke it in there and that keeps all the blades lube lubricated don't let them get all corroded with salt grease and then i'm just going to plug it in well as you can see behind me that's the mess i got going on right now i've got the switches in they look pretty boss um 
I'm getting ready to wire everything up. I have everything pre-rigged, so that way I can just hook it up, put the end on it, and hook it up. Brings me to my next topic for you guys. I'm using heat shrink connectors, like here's some right here. I just bought them off of Amazon. They're pretty cheap nowadays. Um, you got the yellow, uh, blue, and the red. They're all for different sizes. I even got the blade ones, and I put them in here as well. And that's for like blade connectors. But the main thing when you're crimping these things is not to use any old crimper. Um, there's a couple different style of crimpers, but the most common one I see everybody using is these Klein crimpers. While they are nice crimpers, um, they're not the correct ones. What they do is they put a hole in the actual um, heat shrink and that causes corrosion. I'm gonna show you right now. So here's just a normal heat shrink connector. I'm gonna put it in there. And this is how you would crimp a wire. You put the wire in, up, obviously, and you would crimp it. And it crimps nice, but as you can see, it leaves that hole there. Once you heat shrink that hole, it actually breaks it apart and actually lets corrosion penetrate inside there. Um, the best crimpers you can buy are the ones that don't put that hole in there. You can get them on Amazon. These are, these are them right there. These are just the Titan brand. I bought them off Amazon. And what you do is they just crimp down. I'm going to show you on the other side of this one here. You line it up with the blue. See, there's the blue. It's got blue, green, or blue, yellow, and red. All different sizes. You crimp down on it. And it's like a ratchet almost. Pop it back and see how it crimps it right there. Nice and even all the way around, crimps it. Same thing here. Now this is the other side, it crimps it good as well, but it just leaves that hole there. The other one does not leave a hole. That's the main thing is you wanna pre-rig everything to where it doesn't rot. You want it to last for at least like 10 years. The only way it's gonna do that is if it's totally sealed from the elements. You don't wanna be putting holes in the you know, the jackets or the wire or the heat shrink connector, um, it's just gonna rot it out, eventually turn green. When power's running through it, gets a little bit wet or gets some moisture on it. Just a recipe for disaster. You're gonna be fixing it later. I also have another tool that's a game changer. If you don't have one and you're doing a big wiring job like this one, it's called, they're called wire strippers. I guess they're just uh, strippers. These are the ones I have, they're made by Vice Grips. I also have another set that kind of do a little bit different style. Same basic concept though. I'm gonna show you what I do with these. All right, so here they are right here. This is the, the wire I'm gonna show you here. And these are the strippers. All you do is you're gonna put it inside here, just like this, and it strips it for you. That quick. Twist it around, this is all tinned wire, but just showing you, that's how quick it is. Let me show you again here. Boom. That's as quick as it is. And that's a game changer, like I said earlier. If you're doing a bunch of wires like all these wires, you're stripping a lot. You ain't trying to snip, snip, pull it off manually. Boom, just one click, strips it good for you. All right, well, let me get back to it. I'm gonna put the amp in. I'm gonna start bolting everything in. Hopefully I can get this thing pre-rigged tonight. Let's go. So I was going through all the power wires and I noticed I started cutting open some heat shrink. This is what I got so far right here. Lots of green, that's my old wires. I cut it off, check the wires, and I made new ones. These are the new ones I got made here, the heat shrink crimped. I have a hydraulic crimper, which I've been using. They got it from Harbor Freight. I've modified it a few times. Got a bunch of dies in there for it. But that's what I've been doing so far tonight. I didn't get complete pre-rigged all done, but that's what I got done so far. I cleaned up all the harness wiring and everything. So now I just have to hook up the switches and the components. And um, I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible. Rig it all outside, then put it in. So I'm gonna hang it up right here. I'm gonna come back tomorrow after work, try to get another couple hours in. I'm trying to get this bad boy done. If it's smooth out this weekend, I'm going offshore. Big boats on the lift. If it's not, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on this because I gotta get this bad boy in the water for sheep's head season. All right, well, let me get to it. I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully I can finish pre-rigging this bad boy up. 
So another good tip I have for you guys is at Harbor Freight, they have, it's called the Marine Heat Shriek Tubing Assortment. It's 42 pieces, it's like $5.99. Sometimes they have a sale, it's $4.99. But it's a great deal, this is good stuff. It's got the uh, glue inside of it. So when you heat it, you can see the glue coming out. It's really cool, really cool. Um, good product, if you need to use it, go grab you some at Harbor Freight. There it is right there. So I'm gonna jump back in here. We're gonna finish wiring today. Hopefully I can get all the switches hooked up, all the stuff hooked up in the console, and then I can get to rigging the engine. All right guys, well I'm back in the shop again project's gonna be done sooner than later hopefully but i got all of the speakers mounted rod holders my running lights up front is is the new led lights um so they don't go bad they're stainless casings and then i've been doing all the wiring for all the switches the switches are up top as you can see down below i have my panel that i showed you how i made and then i got some stuff i got coming back in I'm putting fuses on every one of my, after the switch, I have a fuse, an inline fuse going in there bet between that and the component it's switching. So that way I can, if there's something goes out, I can just see it right there. And it's gonna go, I'm gonna put another one. It's coming in the mail right now, but it's gonna go to the left of that switch. So I got that coming. I also got a negative bus bar I'm putting in there for all the, you know, the, the negative sides of these components. I'm gonna have them come up there. So it's all home runs. On home run, I mean, um, from the component all the way to the switch panel in one run. There's no splices, because that's how um, water gets in stuff with splices and stuff like that. So I want home runs, every one of them, no, nothing to go bad. This boat lasted for 10 years. I think I had to replace a few switches, uh, but as you, as you can see, it got used. I need another 10 years out of this bad boy now, because I got a lot of work going into it. I've also got in the back area starting to go in. I've got the bilge pump all done. I did end up putting a bilge pump in here, but it's just going to be an auto just to clear out this sump because I have come in off the dock after some hard rains. I haven't checked on the boat in like three weeks and that, that little sump back there had water in it. So I want to make sure I don't have any water. I'm just going to have it bilge right in here. It's auto bilge, nothing more. And uh, I also got a new aerator I, I put in there. I'm trying to keep this area nice and clean because it's always damp back there. I might even start cracking this hatch when I'm done every day just to kind of let it air out. But um, yeah, it's going good so far. I'm gonna wait till I get everything up here done first and then I'll button all this up back here. But as you can see, here's all my tools. I got batteries, wire, lights, you name it. All up through here. It was clean looking when I gel coated it, but buddy, it's under a major, major transformation right now. Let me jump up in here and show you what it looks like inside the console. So inside the console, this is what it's looking like so far. I've been tie wrapping everything. I got all my new switches up there. They're all tie wrapped nice and neat. I'm still tie wrapping over in that area or zip tying. Been just kind of putting it all together. Trying to make it as neat as possible. There's no tension on any of the wires. And just uh, hopefully I'll have this thing done and buttoned up. I'm waiting on this last part to come in right now. And um, I should be good. But as it looks right now, it looks pretty good so far. Got my amp mounted right there. Um, yeah. So let me get back to it. We'll get going. So I just got done crimping it, heat shrinking the end. And now I just take some dielectric grease and what that does is it keeps it sealed from the environments and also keeps it from corroding, which is pretty big. So I put that on then I slide it on the blade. At the end, I'm gonna tie wrap it all, make it look really good and um, I'll be done, thank gosh. Whew! So where I'm at right now, I've got everything wired up. It doesn't look good yet, but everything's wired up right now. Now I gotta go and clean it up. I just checked everything, make sure everything works. All the switches work, everything's working. 
I just want to make sure everything is buttoned up and now I'm going to tie wrap it make it all boss looking and make it look really clean but um so far that's what it looks like so far batteries are in the spots and I just got to tie wrap everything so here we go it's gonna make everything I'm gonna combine everything make it look all nice and straight um, tie wrap it all and secure it so when we're going over waves and stuff it ain't bouncing around and coming loose all right well I'm gonna get to it I'll see you guys here in a second seen me do I just did these little tie wraps all on the edge each time each one came out made it go up it's all nice and neat everything's dielectric greased everything I might even put some dielectric grease on this bus bar this negative bus bar but this is the way it looks right now I'm trying to get it all nice and uh, pretty looking I guess you'd say and serviceable that's the main thing serviceable I don't want to touch this again for the next 10 years I hope so I'm sealing everything, dielectric grease and everything, making sure everything's covered with some sort of protectant and uh, heat shrinked to the gills, as you can see. All right, well, I'm gonna get back to it. I got the power outlet and then I'm gonna focus on just cleaning everything up and putting the trim ring on and uh, hopefully it'll be done here in about 10, 15 minutes. I got it all done pretty much as you can see looks pretty good now I gotta pull this panel back off and get behind there tie wrap everything all nice down to the thing down to the rigging tube and then I'll start working my way back there getting ready for this engine to be put on but that's pretty much it right there I'm gonna go ahead and button it up right now I'll show you the finished product I'm pretty stoked on how it came out so trying to get it finished got some sheep's head to catch let me get on this bad boy. I'll show you when it's done. All right, guys, finally. I finally got the thing finished. All the wiring's done. The whole console's done. Check it out. Boom. That's what it looks like right now. All, everything's mounted. The speakers are mounted. Bluetooth. This is a little uh, helm pad right here. It holds your phone if you're doing something. Not at high speeds, of course. I got a floodlight for the back front deck. Cup holders have been in there. But everything's done. Stereo's on, as you can see. I have the new Simrad powering up there. This is what I did right here. Did all this, what we're, I was showing you earlier. I have a fuse block for every component, a fuse for every component, negative bus bar, everything's covered in dielectric grease. You can see it's protected. I have a battery switch, and then I have stuff that don't need a switch right here. I need to label it still. Um, the, 
just powers up when I put this on, like the stereo, the, the fish finder, um, anything that I need power to that does not need a switch. But that's pretty much it, man. I finished it up. Now it's getting back to the back of the boat. I'm gonna rig the motor up next. I'm also trans, uh, transforming my hydraulic jack plate into an electric. So there's no hydraulic pump needed. It's a pretty cool kit. I'll show it to you on the next video. But that's what I'm doing on the next video, guys. Putting the motor on and we're gonna get this thing done. Sheep set are on fire right now and I need to get out there. But anyway, well, I appreciate everybody watching. Stay tuned for the next video. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Jacked up out.